you would like to see Golik <laughs> grow his hair for your entertainment. Dan Jennings is the new manager of the Miami Marlins for one game. And by now, most of you have probably heard they fired their manager over the weekend. Everyone thought Jeff Conine was going to get that job instead in what was described by many as a stunning move. They hired Dan Jennings, who had been their general manager. He's a baseball lifer, but he hasn't been a coach or a manager. Basically, uh, he has never worn a uniform in the majors. The last time he was a coach or a manager was at a high high school school, in Mobile, Alabama. So this was a move that surprised a lot of people. And it seems to have rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Jerry Krasnick on ESPN.com wrote yesterday, at its best, this is a creative and imaginative piece of thinking that goes down as a stroke of brilliance by the Marlins' front office and ownership. At its worst, it is a move that is destined to fail and an insult to the managing profession. They lost their game last night. Here was Jennings. Uh, That's somewhat surreal. A little bit, uh, you know, other than the final outcome of the game, because you play them to win. Um, but it was uh, it was surreal to be there, be in the moment. Uh, it definitely moves quicker in the dugout than it does in the uh, in the suite upstairs. No doubt about that. Hmm. Oh, does it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> who saw that coming? Yeah. Anyway, I, I, I would listen with interest last night on Baseball Tonight. Yep. Chris Singleton offered this thought. It can be insulting to Mm -hmm. baseball guys that have been in the game, that have paid their dues in uniform on the field uh, to be bypassed, if you will, for an opportunity like this or to be handed what seems like lightly to a person who does probably a great job in the front office. He's done a great job as a scout, but it almost makes it seem like, oh, it's not that hard to manage in the big leagues. We'll just throw our GM in there, and, and it almost rolls as a domino where you're thinking people will have the perception that a major league job, a guy, uh, jobs that guys have worked a hard, long road to, to get to, it's not that hard yeah. to be a big league player. And it's it's a little bit embarrassing to me, uh, you know, as a, as a baseball person to see this happen uh, at the major league level. I completely understand that. And, you know, I heard Timmy Kirkshen talking about it, saying he was getting texts from some managers, and one just had Jennings and a question mark. Yeah. I, here's how I'll equate this. And I, I'm just going to tell you right now, managers in, in Major League Baseball right now who have either played the game and or went through their, you know, work that they did to get their managing job are hoping this guy fails. I'm, I'm just, you won't hear it from them. They won't say it. But when Steve Spurrier came into the NFL from South Carolina, Steve Spurrier, one of the first things he said was, basically, I'm doing it different. You know, I'm still going to be golfing. You know, we're not going to spend as much time at the facility uh, than some of these other coaches do. I mean, and the other coaches got ticked off. And all of a sudden, their work ethic was questioned. The, the thought they weren't doing it the right way. And Steve was going to come in and do this basically more like a 9-to-5 job. You know, still get his golf game in and be able to coach winning football. And he failed miserably. And I guarantee you, coaches, NFL coaches were happy about that. And I'll say the same thing about the Major League Baseball managers. They do not want to see this guy succeed. I go to your point you made when Sean Payton was suspended for the year in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And they went out and played great. What would that look like? You made that point. What would it look like if they go 14-2 and without their head coach? All of a sudden we're saying, what's the worth of a head coach? And now you're you're getting a guy who was a scout, and and by all stretch of the imagination, he's in the base uh, the, the Hall of Fame as a scout, is he not? I believe, I, yes. So listen, he did it. He did it well, well enough to be put there. So kudos to him for that. But you know, wasn't a player and has no managing experience, and now is is takes over this job. There is no way. Managers, as I said, who have played or have went through a process, you know, managing in other places on their way up want this guy to succeed because it's going to make them look like, oh, yeah, anybody can drop in out of the, you know, it's not like when Bobby Cox, you know, he had managed already, had he not? Uh, When he was a GM and then then came down and he managed, I I believe so. Um, So I I think guys are going to want him to fail without question. Here's the thing, that I, I, I have mixed feelings on this. One of them is I I like outside the box thinking. So I like sort of non-cookie cutter, well, we got to go out and get a guy who just do this the way everyone else Mm -hmm. has always done it. So there's a part of me that appreciates trying something a little different. There's another part of me that says that particular owner doesn't get the benefit of the doubt, right? Jeff Loria does not get the benefit of the doubt 
if, if there's a question about motivation, if there's a question about um, a, a, about a move that you make being one that leaves everyone scratching their heads, your inclination is not to say, well, that guy did it, so he must know what he's doing. You know, we've always said that about Belichick. Every move they make, well, that, he, he obviously knows what he's doing, right. so you give him the benefit of the doubt. I do not think Jeff Loria gets the benefit of the doubt, for whatever that's worth. Now, there's another part of me, so now there's three parts of me. <laughs> the third part of me does, to some degree, appreciate the notion that for, for, for since the beginning of time, People involved in sports act as though this is the most complicated thing in the entire world. As though if, if I wasn't going to be a baseball manager or a football coach, I probably would have worked at NASA or something like that, right? I probably would have done that because, you know, it requires such a level, as George Costanza would have said, of delicate genius to do this job that no one outside could possibly understand it. But then the other side of me, so now there's a fourth side, remembers Buck Showalter when he worked here. He and I sat down together one day. We were shooting a Sports Center commercial, or we were shooting a piece. It wasn't a Sports Center, whatever. We were shooting a piece, and we had a lot of downtime. And I said to him, Buck, take me through all the decisions that you're making in a game. And he went through a lengthy list. He went through about a four minute dissertation of where he's got his left fielder and where he's playing his infield and what he's doing this. And then he stopped, and then he said, And so now it's the second pitch. And he went from there. So I, I have four different opinions, and ultimately they add up to this. I think this will probably wind up being a disaster for the following reason. Dan Jennings is the Marlins' sixth different manager since 2010, right? That speaks to the owner. Yeah, yeah it does. That speaks to the plan or lack thereof. And I don't know who you were going to put in there that this was necessarily going to work better. Your superstar came out a couple of weeks ago and said, we're not playing hard. At the end of the day, that was pretty much the beginning of the end. I, I, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. And, and listen, I'm not saying that I want this guy to not do well doing this. I don't, I don't know him. But I'm just telling you how other managers are going to feel. Whether, you know, you, we think, you think they can go be a rocket scientist if they're not. I, I, and I agree with you, some may think that. But I think most just think they're really good at their craft and there's a reason they're good at their craft. And that somebody who has no experience in it at all, stepping down and jumping into their craft and all of a sudden is successful doing it, is I, I don't think they want to see that. How is it that a huge quarterback decision gets made and no one pays any attention? That happened yesterday. Details in one minute after 